What is going on, YouTube? I am Lamont at Large. Today, I am in Amityville, Long Island, New York, and I'm here to show you the home where on November 13th, 1974, six members of the DeFeo family were found brutally murdered. Also, the series of events that led after the murder of the DeFeo family is based loosely on a 1979 horror movie called The Amityville Horror. You had seven members of the DeFeo family that lived at 112 Ocean Avenue here in Amityville, New York. You had Ronald DeFeo, 43 years of age. His wife, Louise, also 43. They had five children together. 23-year-old Ronald DeFeo Jr., who was commonly referred to as Butch. You had Don DeFeo, 18 Allison DeFeo, 13. Mark DeFeo, 12 years of age. And the youngest, John Matthew DeFeo, 9. So at around 6.30 p.m. on November 13th, 1974, Butch comes running into Henry's Bar, which was his local watering hole here in Amityville, and starts screaming, you gotta help me. I think my mother and father have been shot. Now, this is the location of where Henry's bar used to be. It used to be that pizza place right there. So he comes to what used to be Henry's bar right here and says, oh, I think my mom and dad have been shot. Now, to know Butch back in those days was to know an outright drunk and a drug addict. Whatever you had, he was in on it. Weed, smack, LSD, heroin, whatever. This guy was a major drug addict. So he goes into the bar saying that my mom and dad have been shot and everybody's looking at him like, okay, this guy's probably on a bad trip per usual and he just throws himself down on the floor and sobbing and man I'm help I, I'm serious my mom and dad have been shot so one of his friends says okay hey man we better go check this out this guy is either tripping out or he's serious so they all get into his friend's vehicle and they start driving down the street towards 112 Ocean Avenue. After a quick 45 second drive down to the house, Butch arrives with his friends. The friends go inside the home. He tells them that his parents are upstairs in their room. One of the friends goes into the room and finds Ronald DeFeo on the bed, not moving, and it looks like he has a hole in his back the mother also dead she was covered up in her quilt almost like it was a very cold night one of the other friends goes into the other rooms finds the two younger DeFeo brothers Mark and John Matthew both in their beds dead and the same for Don and Allison one of the friends calls 911. They arrive, do a search of the home. Everybody's dead. They take Butch down to the police station to question him. They're asking him everything. What happened? Where were you? So forth and so on. Immediately, Butch says, hey, this was a mafia hit. Yeah, I, I owed somebody some money. It was Louis Fellini. And they say Louis Fellini. Now, Louis Fellini is no stranger to the police. And while they're talking to him, they get a couple guys to go look for Louis. They pick him up, take him down to the station. <laughs> and they're like, hey, yeah, somebody's blaming you for uh, a murder where six people were killed. 
And he says, what are you talking about? Uh, Louis Fellini had an airtight alibi. He was nowhere near the murder scene. So they're talking to Butch and they're noticing some inconsistencies in his story. First of all, he's not really being clear on where he was at the time of the murders. Uh, he was at work. Uh, he was getting ready to go to work. Uh, he was at his friend's house. Uh, it was this, it was that. There was a lot of holes in the story. Finally, the next day, he confesses. He confesses to murdering his mom, his dad, his two brothers, and his two sisters. He said, quote, once I started, I just couldn't stop shooting. It went so fast. He tells the detectives that after he shot everybody and killed him, he took off all his clothes, put the gun away, and took a bath. That's all he did. He just sat in the bathtub with the bodies of his entire family in their beds. So immediately they take him to jail and charge him with six counts of first degree murder. Now, he's sitting in jail. The trial starts the following year in October. At first he was denying it, then he admitted to it, and now he's coming up with excuses for what happened. Uh, he's saying that he was crazy, that he was hearing voices, his family was telling uh, the voices in the head that they were after him, and he thought, the only way to protect myself is to kill them. Now, some other things in the trial came out to light uh, to try to help Butch's uh, case. First of all, Ronald DeFeo, come to find out, was somewhat of an abusive father and husband. When Butch was a kid, uh, he was quite chubby when he grew up and a lot of Neighborhood kids would make fun of him, calling him fat and pork chop and whatever. His dad would often bully him, throwing him around. Even Luis's brother would say, yeah, there was one time where I'm at the house and they got into an argument and the father, he just threw Butch against the wall and he really hurt his shoulder. And there'd be times where he would force his son to these uh, boxing matches. They would like go out in the backyard and just fight. And the father was quite a bit bigger than his son. So there was some abuse going on in the home. Also, there was some physical and emotional abuse being carried out by Ronald DeFeo Sr. against his wife, Louise. She had even left him one time before uh, only for him to woo her back. So you had the testimony of Luis's brother stating that Ronald was an abusive husband and father. You have years of rampant drug use. Maybe you have some schizophrenia. You have a mass amount of LSD being experimented with and used by Butch. The defense did have a psychiatrists who testified on their behalf on Bush's behalf that there is some mental illness going on of course the prosecutor they also had a, a uh, psychiatrist who said that yeah he just has an antisocial uh, personality disorder he knew exactly what he was doing when he was committing the crime uh, also the fact that they having the evidence of the weapon used the bloody clothes oh and by the way uh, during the initial interview with detectives, Butch asked him, Hey, how do I cash in on my family's life insurance policy? Your family's just been brutally murdered. You're asking about the life insurance policy? Something's not adding up here. So the trial goes on for about six or seven weeks. And in November of 1975... Robert DeFeo Jr. is found guilty of six counts of first-degree murder. 
And the following week, in the early part of December 1975, uh, he sentenced to six consecutive life terms in prison at the Sullivan Correctional Facility. A uh, absolutely brutal family murder that occurred, uh, but the story doesn't stop there. Now, before I get into the story of how the movie and the book came to be, you're going to see right in front of you that is the murder house, that is the house where the DeFeo family were shot and killed by Ronald DeFeo Jr. And of course, this is also the house that is based upon the book, The Amityville horror and as you can see the house pretty much looks the same not much has changed in the uh, almost 50 some odd years where the murders occurred the house has been bought and sold four different times before uh, the last time the house was sold was in 2017 it was sold for six hundred and five thousand dollars now we're going to talk about the events that was based loosely on what occurred in the house after the DeFeo murders. So while Ronald DeFeo Jr. is being sentenced to six consecutive life terms for the murders of his family, you still have an empty house. And it was a good price. So in 1975, George and Kathy Lutz, they were looking for a home for their family to move into. And they see this house is going for right at around $80,000. Now, of course, they knew what had occurred in the house the year previous. But, hey, getting a house like that for eighty k on Long Island, you know, that's a steal. So they moved on right on in. Now, what I'm about to tell you is based off of George Lutz's interviews and what he's written about that were published in uh, some newspapers around the country. So they move in and they hired a priest to bless the house. Now, according to uh, you know the movie or what have you, uh, the priest is blessing the house and some demonic force smacks him and says, get out. And from then on, the series of events that led to the Lutzes basically running out of the home screaming <laughs> about a month after they moved in they left all their possessions and they just got the hell out of that house because reportedly it was haunted uh you had you know supposedly from what george and kathy said you had doors being ripped from hinges uh cabinets opening and closing uh of course you remember the infamous uh slime oozing out of the walls uh, the front door would just open and slam, according to George. He would wake up all the time, like practically every night at around 3.15 a.m. And of course, 3.15 a.m. is the about the reported time that the murders occurred. They would smell like weird smells in the home. All kinds of weird paranormal activity. The children's beds would levitate off the ground, and according to George Lutz, there was nothing that he could do about it because basically he was paralyzed. There was some kind of a, a supernatural force was paralyzing him. Now, here's where we get into the debunking of all that story and what led to the uh, Amityville Horror movie and the book. Depending on who you want to believe, in interviews later on after the family moved out, Kathy's two, uh, she, Kathy's three kids. I believe that George Lutz was not the father of the three kids. He was just a stepdad. Because in the interviews, some of the kids have his last name. Like maybe he adopted them. But then the younger one does not have his last name. So, according to the kids... George Lutz practically invited the ghost in. Uh, he was obsessed with the occult. 
Uh, the children, now they were young at the time. So, you know, the memory is not going to be the greatest when it comes to looking stuff up. But they basically said in the interviews that as children, some weird things did occur in the house. Now, they do say that. There was some odd things that happened in the house, but that George really just fabricated a lot of stuff. Uh, something that you would hear, like maybe like a bump. Uh, he would say it was uh, some ghost uh, beating on the wall. Uh, it appeared that after George and Kathy Lutz got a divorce, which was basically the year after the movie came out that they just considered their stepdad just more of like a, a sideshow carnival barker than anything uh, they don't believe that all the stuff that was in the movie was real they just believe that he just kind of trumped up a lot of stuff a lot of stuff and in a 1988 television interview William Weber, who was the attorney for Ronald DeFeo Jr., claimed that it was all made up because him and George sat down with a couple bottles of wine and just kind of fabricated this story. And the Lutz family, they did make quite a bit of money. I think they were paid around $300,000 for the rights to their story, which, of course, the book in 1977, the Amityville Horror, came out. And then you had the 1979 movie, Amityville Horror, you had the, I think it was in the mid-2000s, uh, the remake of the Amityville Horror came out, and The Conjuring, which is based on the events, supposedly, that happened uh, in the uh, Amityville Horror. So, you have a lot of people who say this, you have a lot of people that say that, uh, even the children, uh, you know, just said that George was just spewing nonsense. You know, if, if, uh, if you're into the occult and you're asking for them to come to the house it was just kind of a weird situation at the end of the day so i didn't want to focus too much on the actual events that reportedly occurred because you know like i said uh none of the owners have reported any kind of problems in the house uh since they moved out there's been no uh no signs of anything. The, the owners haven't heard anything. They haven't seen anything. Uh, nothing of the kind. So whether you believe in ghosts or you believe in spirits or what have you, uh, at the end of the day, it appears to be just a lot of Hollywood fiction. A lot of, uh, you know, just a lot of that. And it makes me kind of sad in a sense because that story of them getting murdered uh, has been overtaken by this uh, supposed ghost story that looks like at the end of the day, even though I wasn't there and you know, maybe I can't say without a shadow of a doubt whether it's true or not I mean, it, it appears to be all fiction In case anybody's wondering what happened to the Lutzes, in 2004, Kathy Lutz died at the age of 57 of emphysema. And two years later, while living in Las Vegas, George Lutz died of a heart attack at the age of 59. And this is the grave of the DeFeo family. I mean, a, just a horrible family murder and that I vlog every now and then, but a little bit of tragedy on top of such major tragedy is that movie, in my opinion, that it, it basically overshadows uh, this horrible event that occurred you know, almost 50 years ago.
Rest in peace to the DeFeo family. So let me know in the comment section, uh, do you believe George and Kathy Lutz? Do you believe the events that they said occurred in their home, which led them to basically run out with just their clothes on their back? Let me know. I'm curious to hear your opinion. Anyways, I'm Lamont at large at the St. Charles Cemetery here on Long Island, New York. I'll catch you up in the next vlog. Peace out.